Hey, Brendo, Steve here. Hey, Lars. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you can be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Available wherever podcasts can be found. Of course, taped live at the Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. Today is Wednesday. That means tomorrow is Thursday. We're going to be doing our live Impact Watch co-stream thing where you can watch Impact on our Twitch channel with us. Me, Larson, the Enforcer should be a lot of fun. We took the week off last week. We're back at it this week. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, that should be really cool. Uh, before we get into our NXT recap, where a new North American champion was crowned, let's talk about the place where all those NXT superstars are genesis <laughs> That's not a word. The Performance Center. It's where it's filmed. The Capitol Wrestling Center. And yeah. one, the Vincent Kennedy McMahon visited that place larson what's going on or it's going to yeah so in recent weeks we've heard some stories about various wwe officials visiting the performance center do some talent scouting uh for one would think for some potential main roster call-ups so a couple of days ago fightful select by the way go subscribe to fightful select wrestling news directly to your email yeah so if you have a phone like one of these email is received wrestling news right there right it's great anyway so the, the fightful select reported that Vince McMahon himself was making a trip to the Performance Center this week to scout talent, noting that they had heard that Vince was going to be there Thursday. That's tomorrow. So given that it seems like Bronson Reed is most certainly getting called up after losing that North American title last night, it also seems very likely that Karrion Cross, Scarlett, and Shotzi are probably headed to the main roster as well, given that they've had some uh, matches on main event or were scheduled to. Uh you know, you got to start talking about who else might be brought up from NXT to Raw or SmackDown. And is there really anybody or or, or can an influx of talent uh, from NXT do anything to turn around Raw's horrible ratings? Uh, according to Brandon Thurston, the third lowest ever for the show, 1.57 million. Um, it seems like given all the releases that WB have, have made over, over the last six months, they're trying to you know, uh, fill the ranks on main roster with NXT call-ups. I mean, it's seemingly they're taking NXT's top two champions from the men's division mm -hmm. with Karrion Cross, Bronson Reed, uh, you know, uh, Shotzi, who's a major part of the women's division, Scarlett. Um, who else? Like, how what, how many people are we, are we thinking are going to get the call? How many people are left on the SmackDown and Raw women's rosters? I think there's... 10 officially on the SmackDown. That includes Sonya Deville. That's mm -hmm. according to Wikipedia. I think there's 10. Okay. So of the nine that are in ring talents, I'm sorry, I'm just putting you on the spot in terms of math. That's fine. That's fine. How many are involved in tag teams? Because I wonder if they're going to try to start separating out the tag division from the women's division. Well, on Smack, like officially, I believe Natalia and Tamina are SmackDown. Okay, sure. So they're in a tag team. Now. So take them out. Yeah. Um, I'll say Sasha. She hasn't been on TV since WrestleMania. She hasn't been on TV. Yeah, you got to assume she'll be back for SummerSlam. So we got Sasha, Otherwise, Bailey, Bianca in the singles division. Yeah, and then you got Carmella, Liv Morgan. Carmella, Liv Morgan that was good. And so we see Sasha, Bailey, uh, mm -hmm. Bianca, Carmella, Liv Morgan, Natty, Tamina, Sonya. So I'm missing two. It's probably a tag team of some sort. Maybe here I can just check rather than guess. Yeah. Um. I mean, given that right now I can think of uh, five, or we've thought of five, Mia Yim, but she hasn't been. Yes, she hasn't debuted. But that's yet. A, that's a name, sure. She hasn't actually debuted yet. Um, so yeah, I think that yeah, they need. I don't know. Okay, so right now on Wikipedia, there's only nine, so we have named them all. Okay, but what is that? Six, including Mia Yim, are singles. Um, so SmackDown could use. I don't know. I mean, if they, if they want another tag team, then you're looking at maybe up to like five. Well, it's it's interesting that seemingly with the the tag titles, we we saw this with with Shayna and Nia, where they're on Raw, they win the tag titles, and they go, you know, they they appear on both shows, but mm -hmm. you know, especially when there's a real title feud, yeah, they will actually seemingly go to the other brand for that particular title feud, and as opposed to having it all on Raw. So right now. Uh, you have uh, Natalia and Tamina kind of feuding with Mandy and Dana over on Raw. Mm -hmm. 
for the time being. Now, once they go back out on the road, who knows if that's going to be the case per se, since it's going to be a lot harder, or in theory harder, for them to appear on both shows, but I don't know. I, don't I think, know. I, so I'll, I'll throw these names out. This is who I think is going to be. I think it's going to be Tony Storm. Like, she has sort of just hovered around, like, the mid-card scene. Like, you think that she could, like, you know, win the title. She totally could. But they haven't really done it. They haven't really included her in any big plans like that. So I'm going to say Tony no, Storm. They've really not done anything with her. They haven't Great really done point. anything with her. Tony Storm, the ones we've already seen, Shotzi and uh, and Scarlet, we know that they're probably mm-hmm. headed to main roster. Mm-hmm. Um, I I would, if I was Ember Moon, I'd be like, put my head down. I'd be hiding in the back. I'd be like, I'm not I doing know. that again. Yeah. Um, although she has already had a title shot. And she's in a tag team with somebody who's probably going to go to main roster. So maybe as a team, they've got new life on main roster. But I think if Vince takes a look at Shotzi, it's going to be like, no, that's a single star right there. Well, and also, you look at most tag teams in WWE, they're a team, they win the titles, and they lose the titles, and they break up. That's Another, how- yeah. Yeah. Another name that I feel like they're setting up something for her in NXT, but Vince is probably going to pluck her and put her on Raw is going to be uh, Frankie Monet. I think mm-hmm. I think uh, uh, Frankie Monet is probably more main roster material than NXT material. Plus, obviously, she's married to John Morrison. Yeah. So I think that might be the case there. Um, I'm not uh, sure how much more Mercedes Martinez can do. That was a name I was going to bring up, too. So she will probably it would not shock me to see her. Yeah. I think if they want if they want to debut like a really killer tag team who can't do it, who is not even in wasn't even in the number one contenders thing is Casey Canzaro and Caden Carter. Yeah. Like they are yeah. so creative. They're a great tag team. Put them on main roster. Um, and then Io Shirai is going to be interesting. They have actually with what Adam Cole is doing now with what champ is doing now. With uh, with what they seem to be getting right is the post title career. Yeah. Now yeah. that they understand, there are certain people. My question is this: Given that Cross and Reed um, are relatively new title winners, I mean Cross was supposed to have won that a while ago off Keith Lee. He did, then was sidelined with injury. Yeah, yeah. Reed's relatively new. Are we gonna see with whatever whoever gets called up? Is Triple H going to start anticipating who is, we saw this also with Damian Priest, who is probably going to be headed to main roster and then avoid actually saddling them with titles because this ain't going to work. Like Reed should have had this title for a lot longer, but they're doing the thing where they're beholden to Vince McMahon. Mm-hmm. And yet they still want to make stars out of these people before they go to main roster. Mm-hmm. But like similar with Damian Priest, I know he had the North American title, but he wasn't a title holder when he got sent to Maine and they had to quickly drop it off him. He actually had kind of a story going after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I wonder if there's going to be a change in philosophy in terms of, okay, we've got guys like Kyle O'Reilly, who's probably NXT for life, Adam, or unless till Vince steps aside and Triple H takes over and basically elevates all those guys to like SmackDown. Kyle O'Reilly, Adam Cole, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, probably Thatcher I could see sticking around NXT. Yeah. I mean, Adam Cole is a, is, is an interesting case because I could see him on the main roster. Mm-hmm. He's got the personality to be on the main roster. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, it, you know, it, 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 it's, it's just kind of can Triple H anticipate where Vince's whims are going, you know? Well, large is kind of the thing. I mean, with the men anyways. It's like now, large. yeah, it seems, that seems to be the case now. Um, but you never know. You never know. Like we, when he apparently went to Triple H and says, give me your best guys and called up, wanted to call up Gargano and Ciampa and, and Ricochet and Aleister Black. Those, none of those guys fit the, the large billing. Kind of a different philosophy. I wonder if there's something, if there was a disc, if there was a, a, a change in philosophy, it's like, hey, Triple H. Give me your best guys. He sent those guys. And now it might be, all right, hold on a second. They didn't work. Let me see who you have. Give me everybody you have that's over 6'2". Because, look, Keith Lee, Damian Priest, the two guys now. Uh, I mean, I could search for more in the past, but, like, those you know, are all Kona larger Reeves, guys. Kona Reeves is really tall. I, it's a shock that he's not at least Intercontinental Champion on SmackDown right now. He's been hurt for a while. I think that's why he was out. Yes. According otherwise, to I torn, mean, torn otherwise he'd be the tribal chief. Right, he is the finest after all. Um, so yeah. Anyways, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, obviously NXT in just a second here. But one of the major events uh, that was sort of unfortunate to witness 
was uh, the seeming legitimate knockout of Mercedes Martinez yeah. at the hands of uh, Zia Lee. Um, uh, with a spinning heel kick, she was uh, uh, con- what looked like concussed. She was knocked out. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and like her upper body was a bit rigid. Yeah, and she, she just landed like yeah. a thud. It was kind of scary to watch. Yes. Um, and uh, and the Sean Ross app, of course, pretty well plugged in there from Fightful, uh, uh, tweeted this shortly after uh, the match. Uh, it says Mar- Mercedes Martinez was checked in the back, and talent and staff were told she's headed to the hospital for further evaluation. I've been sort of searching up and down this morning to see if there's been anything else, and I have not seen anything else. She has not tweeted uh, since then, so uh, hopefully she's doing well. Yeah, uh, it'll be nice so. to hear about all that. I, I assume that if she if if she wasn't doing well, we'd have heard either way. So maybe it's just like, hey, you know, she's been evaluated, and we'll, we all have to wait and see. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that was a that was a scary moment. That was scary. Um, that was that was a nasty nasty spot. In an otherwise pretty fun NXT. Like I said, we have a, a new. North American champion in uh, Isaiah. Just last week, just last week, you were saying, "Hey, I kind of feel like they need to to shit or, or get off the pot with uh, uh with Hit Row, with Hit Row, yeah, because they'd been doing kind of a bunch of nothing, and then uh, this week, you know, they well, not a bunch of nothing, but they were in a thing with Ever Rise. <laughs> well, it's like yeah, at this point, their hand has been forced. Ever Rise was released. Yeah, right. Bronson Reed's getting called up. Yeah, there was backstory between Swerve and and Bronson Reed. It made all the sense in the world to have Swerve be the one to take that title off Bronson. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, in a, in a pretty major way, it, it helps push along the hit row storyline, which was fun. Mm-hmm. What they were doing was fun. I just didn't feel like what they were doing was in line with the momentum they had after their, their debut. Yeah. And well, the buzz that they had too, is that people just understood immediately. Okay. They've got, they, they have immediately understood, you know, four people that really they, they, like they just come together and they have mm-hmm. instant chemistry you understand exactly who they are what they are what's going on here mm-hmm. um and they're they're pretty exciting you know they've got that element of danger to them uh they've got the chemistry they've got the comedy they've got even Adonis with his sort of wild card role when he's in the ring yeah. is yeah. really well thought out immediately when we see them um you know the flow of their of their very unique uh promos is really cool Great. really interesting Great. um and uh, and yeah, a fantastic match. Yeah, I probably would have liked to have seen a little bit more of a build to like a takeover, or even like you know next week's Great American Bash. But maybe we'll get uh, maybe we'll get more. I don't know. I don't know when when they're going to debut. Yeah, Reed. I don't know like, either. What is this rollout going to look like? Yeah, I don't know. Is this something where they're going to save all the calls for the draft? Or are they going to start rolling them out beforehand? I don't know. So it, I was I was not surprised that Reed dropped the title. I was a bit surprised that it happened so quickly. Same, yeah. And, and maybe this is a situation yeah. where the 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 card for Great American Bash is already full. You know, mm-hmm. to fill the two hour show. Mm-hmm. Um, so they they felt the need to to get it in here this week. I don't know, don't know. It was uh, it was one of those things where I don't know who knows. You know, if you ask Triple H about this, well, I wish people would just enjoy the show. Um. You know, it, it does leave you with questions. Does this portend? Does this signal uh, Karrion Cross? I mean, obviously, he's in a thing with Johnny Gargano right now. Is Gargano yeah. about to have? Is he a two-time NXT champion or one? No, just, just a, one. Okay, just, just one. a fifty-seven. I think days it's a two-time. Ago. He was a two-time North American. Champion. Ah, that's right. So is he now going to become a two-time NXT champion? Because uh, it seems like Cross is main raw. I mean, or are they going to put this off for another? Two months until the draft. Well, they could put it off until takeover, which is yeah, about two months. Yeah, mm-hmm. day after SummerSlam, they can yeah. put it off till then if yeah. they want to build that story, or if they want to, you know, through the summer have other events like Great American Bash. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If they want to try to do something. Uh, they usually do it that close to takeover. If they mm-hmm. want to do something in early August. But that's a little close. Um, so yeah, I would guess it's probably going to be a takeover match then. Yeah, it is. I mean, I don't know. You've got, uh, you know, obviously we're only weeks away from about three weeks away from Money in the Bank where we're Mm going to get back to live fans with WWE. That's supposed to be a new big event. Um, Their roster on main roster is already really stacked in every division. So adding Reed and Cross to that, you know, I wish they'd pull the trigger and do something like, okay, well then bring down, 
Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn to NXT. How cool would that be? Something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Let's take a quick break here and get a word in for the sponsor of today's show, Sheath. So, Steve. Yes. I believe you are a boxer brief type guy, yes? Let me check. Yes, that is correct. I'll tell you why. Because I like to keep my business secure, but also I like to let my dude parts breathe. You hear me, brother? All right. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Let me tell you about these uh, sheath boxer briefs I got on. I actually have a pair right here. Yeah, right here. Are those, See, they're designed. Are those clean? Those are clean, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just so they're designed to keep your man bits off your legs. You see, Sheath has uh, three individual compartments to keep everything down here mm-hmm. separate and cool and comfortable. Think about it this way, Steve. Okay. Sheath's got an inverted kangaroo pouch right here. Got my hands on it. Yeah, I can see to that. Keep your Joey. Oh, man. Uh, for your Joey to keep it from sticking to your thigh. Oh, yeah. I don't like when things get sticky down there. Unless, of course, it's something that I want to get sticky down there. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I guess. Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah. Um, so Sheet's got a modern ergonomic design that's intended to prevent skin on skin contact for extended periods of time, which can, of course, can cause heat and sweat. And when you put heat and sweat together, what do you get, Steve? You get funk. It's disgusting. It's junk funk, too. That's the worst kind of funk is the junk funk. Yeah, that's right. But Sheath prevents all that because everything down here is separate. Yeah. That means... No smelly undercarriage, oh. and that means you'll chafe and readjust way less. That's awesome. So if you want to keep your front area cool and comfortable, go to sheathunderwear.com slash raw for 20% off your order today. That's S-H-E-A-T-H underwear.com slash raw. Make sure to use promo code raw at checkout. Trust us, you'll be doing your junk a favor by going to sheathunderwear.com slash raw for 20% off. Again, that's sheathunderwear.com slash raw for 20% off. Before we continue, here's a word from the sponsor of today's show, Gap. Let me do that again, sorry. Before we get back to the show, here's a word from the sponsor of today's show, Gabby. You know, Steve... Hmm. There are dozens, probably hundreds of companies out there claiming they'll compare home and auto insurance rates, but I'm here to tell you that there's only one that actually does it. Gabby is the one true comparison platform with fast, verifiable quotes. Yeah, with Gabby, you can use your current coverage to find better coverage, comparing policies with 40 of the top insurance providers, including Progressive, Nationwide, and Travelers. Plus, it's totally free, and Gabby will only show you policies that are the same or better than your current coverage, many of them at a lower price. Yeah, Gabby can help you find the right policy. It's fast and super easy to use. I went to Gabby.com, put in some information about my current policy, and in no time at all, got a bunch of insurance quotes, many of them cheaper than what I'm paying now. In fact, Gabby customers save $961 per year on average. So put your policy to the test like we did. Get better insurance with Gabby. It's totally free to check out and there's no obligation. Go to Gabby.com slash raw. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash raw. Gabby.com slash raw. And then, of course, uh, they announced the the breakout tournament yes. is coming back. Uh, a yeah. couple names that we saw tonight might appear. Asher Hale, uh, formerly mm-hmm. known as, I believe, Anthony Henry. Um, okay. and evolve. Um, and then Ari Sterling. Ari Sterling, NWO Sam Gradwell. Uh, from you know last week taunting Cameron Grimes about the million dollar man this week eating the cave in. But they yeah. both, especially Asher Hale, man, that whole opening sequence with the map based stuff, he was keeping up. And that looked so it was that great combination of like fluid and tough, you know, and yep. like yeah. and very physical. Matt Bay stuff, you know, the kind of stuff we see like with Zack Sabre Jr. Um, mm-hmm. And somebody who can really uh, 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 seemingly fit into that role perfectly with Roderick Strong, who obviously that is just he's great at that stuff. Yes. That was a really fun match to watch, even though you knew the outcome. Asher Hale looks like a million bucks. And that Matt Bay stuff was so much fun to watch. So let's let's do some some wild speculation here about of who course. could be in this tournament. You mentioned Asher Hale. Ari Sterling. You got to think Carmelo Hayes is going to be in there. Of course, yeah. Uh, Blake um, Christian, what's his name now? Oh, shoot. Something the, Baxter? Yeah. Trey Baxter? Trey Baxter. There you go. Baxter. Trey Baxter. Yeah. Um, why is he not even listed on here? 
That's weird. Uh, who else? Who else? Uh, Jiro, the guy, the uh, Ordile yeah. here brings up Jiro yeah, yeah. with the coat. Yeah, I, th- I think I think he said on Twitter that he wanted to be in it too. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. five. We ha- see someone like Top Dalla in there. You know, Possibly, carrying huh? on what happened. You know, Swerve was in the first one. Mm-hmm. Top Dalla could be uh, in this. Maybe this some names we've one. already seen. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trying to see who else in the performance center here. Um, um, moving over to the women's side of things, did they do? Yeah, they did a women's breakout, didn't they? Did they do a women's breakout? They didn't do so. one, really. I don't think. I wonder so. if they'll do one this time. They're the the performance recruit, the performance center recruit, is like a loaded class right now. Yeah, and there yeah. are there are all also people that we've already seen. Like I don't know, Zoe Stark is probably too far along to be in a breakout. Yeah, tournament. but we haven't seen much of like uh, uh, Gigi Dolan in NXT. Mm. That's true. Just yeah. A handful of matches, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, she was in that tag tournament when they were crowning the, the the first tag champs, but we haven't seen much of her past that. Um, Electra Lopez, who just had a match last week, right? Yeah, potentially someone else. Maybe uh, uh, Zeta Ramir. Mm-hmm. Um, if she's had a handful of matches, but not the she doesn't have the uh, uh, profile of a Zoe Stark. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gigi Dolan. I mean, dude, if if they, if, if they do a women's tournament and they don't have Gigi Dolan win that thing. They're crazy. There's a bunch. There's a bunch of good names though. Yeah, I mean, like Saray, she had an impact on TV, but not to the degree. If Saray is what, in that tournament, would, would she should tournament. dominate. I mean, she's already got a match that so she's probably it. It would not shock me if Saray's going to win that match with Tony Storm, unless they they end up like splitting the series or something. Like Tony could cheat, but Saray is a she's a she's a monster. Yeah. Like she is terrifying in that ring. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, let's well, go ahead let's and get right uh, into it. Yeah, uh, right this into this it. match that kicked off the show was outstanding. Holy uh, number one contenders crap. match for the women's tag titles. You got Ember and Shotzi versus Zoe Stark, Io Shirai versus Raquel and Dakota. I mean, especially the very beginning. Well, actually, this whole match, the entire it was, thing, it was basically action too fast to call. It was. I started to write notes when Io goes for that first moon salt. Mm-hmm. And ended up eat, uh, hitting Raquel, and Raquel draped herself over Dakota yeah, Kai. Yeah, covering over and I was like, Dakota. oh, this feels like a finish is about to happen. And yeah. then everybody just started hitting finishers on everybody, oh, and it was great. amazing. It was, it so was great. I gave it four stars according to my Steve notes here. It was really good. It was really good. This was killer. The end did see EO actually hit a moonsault on Dakota Kai. But it was just after a crazy sequence of everybody hitting everything. It was so good. It was, it was so, so good. good. Definitely uh, check this match out. And then, like from a storyline perspective, they once again they did the thing where at a certain point Dakota Kai gives up the advantage and Raquel goes in there and clears everybody out. Mm-hmm. There's this one strike. She just went in there and just started throwing everybody around the ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then she got dumped out. Yeah. I am but, so uh, looking forward to that feud, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. Yep, it's going to be good. Gonna I'm happy they're taking their time with it. It's Absolutely. been like three times. We're like, ah, uh, it's got to happen now. They mm-hmm. haven't done it yet. So mm-hmm. I hope they really, really take their time. But yeah, I mean, we could go through the moves here, but it, it wouldn't do the, the match justice. No. Go and watch it if you haven't no. seen it yet. So that means we're going to get uh, Io Shrine and Zoe Stark against The Way uh, at, at the Great American, Great American Bash, Bash. Yeah. Are we going to do, are we going to cover that like a takeover or no? It's pretty much a takeover card, save for a title match. When is the uh, Great American it's, Match? Uh, six, I think it's the Tuesday after the fourth. It's the sixth. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll put my think title about it. up. Where's my big? Where's Big Red? Enforcer. Enforcer has. It. I think he's just run away with Big Red. Larson, somebody's legitimately taking Big Red now, and his name no, is the you, Enforcer. No, you sent it to him. I know who he is now. He hasn't sent it back though. He's stolen it. Did you ask him to? It's mine. I legally own it now because I was best at predictions. So, you know, it's maybe implied. maybe it's something something as simple. You pick up the phone and say, hey, Enforcer, if, if it's not too much of a trouble, can you send Big Red back to me at your nearest convenience? I don't want to put yeah, him sure. out. Yeah. I don't want to rather it. accuse him of theft than yeah. to inconvenience him. Is that out of character for me? No, I should expect it. <laughs> it doesn't make it any less outlandish. <laughs> a new rumor. Uh, uh, after that, yeah. we had after that match opening bout, great opening bout. Go watch it. Uh, we had John Gargano John. attacking Karrion Cross backstage. He more or less spears him into a garage door and starts hitting some strikes. Security breaks it up, and then Cross is yelling at Johnny. Oh, that's how it's gonna be, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Now you're mine. Uh, then we get a package for the breakout tournament. 
starting in two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Who comes? Out, who, who do you think comes out on the men's side of that? Of the breakout tournament? Yeah. I don't know the field yet. It's hard to make that prediction. I don't know the field. My guess is going to be Carmelo Hayes. Yeah, that's a pretty safe pick. He already challenged uh, Adam Cole Kushida. Bebe. Oh, yeah, and, and Adam Cole. He and challenged Kushida. Kushida. Yeah. So he's he's poised to break out. I feel like he's already or broken out. Or that could be a situation he's already kind of bro- broken, already out, broken out. So they're going to give the nod to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That could be as well, yeah. That could be. Uh, we had a Bronson Reed interview. Uh, he's asked about the Breakout Star Tournament. He was in the first one. He says, yeah, it's pretty cool. He says he can't wait to see all the, the fresh names in it. He says if not for that tourney, he wouldn't be North American champion now. Hit row steps up. Swerve's like, you know, I was in that tournament too. Wonder how it came about that you ended up being the North American champion. And then Top Dollar says to Reed, you should put the title up. Uh, and then Swerve goes, yeah, challenge you a title match tonight. Bronson Reed accepts. He was like, yeah, they're going to call me up to Mean Rooster. So, you want the title? You can have the title. <laughs> After that, uh, let's see here. Cross gets on the mic. Mr. Gargano. He says, last week, I got you. This week, you got me. Uh, yeah, because, yeah, early on. Did you mention this backstage? Yeah, I already talked about <laughs> that it. That was so goofy. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. I didn't. I, I was looking for something. That was so goofy. Like, he, he was, like, awkwardly walking very slowly near the garage entrance and then he like his peripheral vision is just complete trash and he doesn't see Johnny running up on him I don't know it was goofy anyways he says uh, this week uh, you got me but I am willing to die by the sword I live by and at present time I want to know if you're willing to do the same I dare you I double dare you I triple dog dare you to walk to this ring and see how well you fare. Triple dog dare you. When I see the shot coming. Expecting and, to hear the voiceover from uh, Ralphie explaining <laughs> the importance of a triple dog a dare. Triple dog dare. <laughs> a triple dog dare. Uh, Johnny says, you dare me? You triple dog dare me? I'm right here. Stick your tongue on this frozen pole. He says, you think I'm afraid of you? Last week, the big bad NXT champion jumped me from behind like a coward. This week, I'll beat you at your own game. Buddy, that ring is my world, and I don't have a sword, but what I have is actual talent. Man, they really kill Cross with that shit, huh? They really do. They really do. Talentless hack. He Man. says, you may be bigger than me, but everyone knows I'm smarter than you. And when he says that, Austin Theory in a true babyface move attacks Cross from behind. That was kind of the weird thing is like they're playing this great like sort of. I know. You know, ba- this this sort of a tweener thing where it's like Gargano still Gargano, but like he's also babyface Gargano now, but he's still going to do the Gargano stuff. It's great. It is pretty great. And the crowd's firmly behind him. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Which is the best part. Yeah. Like he's he's in, in a lot of ways. He's. Still the heel, mm-hmm. but then it's stuff like this where he's like, "Oh, yeah, I'll come out and I'll confront you." Yeah, yeah, exactly. You suck. I'm great. And then the sneak attack is what kind of brings it all back to the heel territory. It's great. It's good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, theory attacks from behind. Cross uh, takes them both out though. Goes to the outside. Rams John's head against the glass a couple times, which is a pretty brutal spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, picks up the steps. He's about to execute Johnny Gargano with the steps. Security comes out, uh, led by Joe. Uh, holds him back, and as they're holding on to him, Johnny super kicks him and cross so sort of like he's been like like a bug was on him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's been on his face, maybe. Yeah. So Johnny and Austin Theory run. Cross and Joe have a bit of a face off, and Cross says, "Yeah, you're doing a hell of a job, Joe." Yeah. Uh, we get another first of two last night of the battery charging vignettes. Mm-hmm. Joe uh, Tegan Knox a- is close. Maybe coming back. Uh, we see Johnny and Austin very quickly backstage, hop in a car. They leave the CWC, and then we get mm-hmm. Roger Strong versus Asher Hale. And as you mentioned before at the beginning of this match, really great stuff. Oh man, uh, Roddy is still doing Roddy stuff, but he's still he's incorporating a bit more of the mat based wrestling, mm-hmm. which yeah. we saw him do from time to time uh, as a member of Undisputed Era, but not necessarily to this degree. Mm-hmm. Finish this, saw Roddy hit uh, Asher Hale with a jumping knee, puts on a reverse full Nelson. And mm-hmm. as Asher Hale is trying to tap, he arm bars his arm. Yeah. So he can't even really like oh, tap. Rude. It was great. Rude. It was great. It was really and good. And then 
afterwards, Malcolm Bivens gets on the mic, says, Diamond Mine is open for business. And this is just the beginning. Uh, after that, uh, Cameron Grimes versus NWO Sam Gradwell, a.k.a. Ari Sterling. Um, it looked like Ari and Asher Hale, they're like they're, they're just sort of collaborating when it comes to their attire scheme. Sort of like they have, you know, the, the, the color hair going on and the fancy. But they look great, but they just look like creator wrestlers. They look like creator wrestlers designed by the same See, person. I thought, I thought Ari Sterling was was kind of dressed like uh, the 205 Live man from the opening graphics. He was all in purple and orange. <laughs> Is that guy still around? Do they still have 205? I don't know. I don't, I don't watch 205 Live anymore. When's, I wonder when the last time it was I watched 205 Live. It has to be like 2019, maybe. Yeah, like I think Early so. 2019. I think so. It could be. Um, so anyways, man, yeah, the, the Twinewinder says Smooth Otis 2.0. Did you see that picture of like Super Smooth Otis, like with regular hair now? Mm-hmm. That was weird. That's uh, probably what it looked like in college. Probably, right? It's always weird when Cal posts pictures of him like from high school and stuff. He looks like he's 40, but he just looks like he's smooth. Um, anyways, Cameron Grimes versus Ari Sterling. Sterling uh, tries uh, towards the finish for a shooting star press, misses, and then eats a cave-in for the win afterwards. Yeah! Yeah! LA Knight comes out says, yeah! Cameron Grimes wins! Oh, nobody gives a damn! Because you got to realize something. Let me talk to you. Yeah! I stand here and look at you and see a natural-born loser because of my coronation for Million Dollar Championship as I grab Ted DiBiase by the head. And then Grimes gets on the mic and says, I'm going to... Grimes is not very great as a babyface, is he? I feel like he's lost because it's just it's the most template babyface stuff. I'm going to say what the crowd says now and say you suck. You want to talk about Ted DiBiase? Get in the ring and fight me. Uh, he says, I wanted that title to carry on the legacy. You just wanted some bling. How about next week I take that bling from you? LA Knight says, ah, you want this title? Yeah. yeah. yeah like having a yeah off. Yeah, yeah, they start having a yeah off. Like Cameron Grimes is like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm supposed to be good. I don't know what to do here because I've never seen him as a good guy before. Oh, he's so good as an irritating, he's annoying. So heel. great. And he's why didn't so they just good. take that and apply that to him being a good guy? I don't know. Instead, he just seems like he's 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 a kiss my grits catchphrase guy now. Uh, so he says, uh, he says, uh, you want to fight me for it next week? Me, you, Great American Bash. This title, nah, nah. You don't deserve it. He pretty much said, yeah, nope. He said, yeah, nope. He <laughs> says, uh, this title wields a lot of power. I got everything I need. There's one piece missing. And the transformation to the million dollar man. No. Well, yeah. The million dollar megastar, LA Knight. If you're so hot to get this title, I'll tell you what. Yeah. This week I had trouble finding my glasses. My car didn't get detailed. Ah, I lost my socks. He said, great American bash. Me, you, this title in line. But if you lose, you become my butler. And Grimes said, Butler, I got no problem being a butler. I'm leaving the champion and going to the moon. Yep. Like he didn't quite understand what was going on there. It didn't it, seem like it. it seemed like he was cool being the butler and winning the title. <laughs> yeah, he thinks, oh, cool. I got that job now. Plus, I get to fight for the title. Yeah. Yeah. I like I like I LA Knight has a hard time, like, you know, fitting in mundane tasks to his schedule. Exactly. Uh, after that, we had an EO Shirai Zoe Stark interview, but nope, the the way interrupts basically immediately. Indy says next week they're facing them, the tag champions. They're a real team. They're a family. EO Zoe, you aren't even friends. Zoe says we don't have to be friends. We have mutual respect, and that'll be enough. So Candace says, well, I'll offer you a little advice after the way wins. Uh, hey Zoe, watch your back because EO tends to be a sore loser. Then EO says, Candace, you've never beaten me. Next week. We're becoming champs. Yeah. Uh, after that, uh, Cool Kyle has a promo. He comes out and says, This journey I've been on has all been about testing myself. Last time I fight, I fought Adam Cole Bebe. It was unsanctioned, and I proved I belong in the main event of the Cruiserweight title. And I proved I could be NXT champion. Cruiserweight champion. Cole refuses to see this. And so, Cole, come on down and enlighten us and give us the excuse you're going to give after I whoop your ass at the Great American Bash. Sorry, Kyle. That's not going to happen. Adam Cole's totally winning that one. <laughs> um, uh, and then so uh, Cole walks down the ramp. Uh, the Joe with security walks to the stage, tells him, hey, sorry for the interruption. Please excuse me. But I came out to ensure that none of the nasty events of previous weeks happened again. But, you know, by all means, go ahead. Have at it. Talk it out. 
He walks into the ring. Cole gets in and says, uh, he, well, I was about to say before I was rudely interrupted that Kyle O'Reilly has made it clear that he wishes to be in my shoes. He probably goes home and prays that he, is, he has half the career that Adam Cole has had, but it's not going to happen. Kyle O'Reilly, you're obsessed with me, and it kind of creeps me out a little bit. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly says that he beat Cole, put him in the hospital, and then Cole showed up, picked the fight with him. Maybe he's the one that's obsessed. Cole calls him delusional. Says Kyle O'Reilly needs a dose of reality. He needs a reality he check. He needs a reality check. The fact is, is that Kyle O'Reilly, O'Reilly is nothing without Adam Cole. Says this is deeper than just NXT. No one would be talking about Kyle O'Reilly without Adam Cole. Think back to all those great Undisputed Era moments. He names off a few. And who do you see standing beside you? Me, Adam Cole, the man who's responsible for all your success. Says he carried Kyle O'Reilly on his back in the Undisputed Era. And he is still the star. The entire world knows it. The locker room knows it. Heck, Samoa Joe knows it. Even your wife knows oh, it. Oh, man. Kevin, uh, sorry, Kyle O'Reilly. Said, <laughs> Kevin Owens. Kyle O'Reilly says, uh, don't you ever mention my wife's name. I am ashamed that I ever associated with you and ashamed it took me this long. To, I don't know why I'm reading it like a game show host. And ashamed it took me it this long. It was all long. because you said, come on, Dan. You thought Price was right. <laughs> and it took me this long to realize what a pathetic human piece. And then uh, I think he was going to say piece of shit. And then uh, they start to go at it. Joe gets between them and says, calm down. And then Adam Cole attacks. Joe ducks. Kyle takes him down, puts him in a heel hook. And Joe just stands there. Joe is great. He's just even just standing there watching this all go down. Like when the wife was brought up, Joe went like this. And he sort of stepped back because he was like, oh, this is good. This is about to go down. Yeah. And so Joe, and Adam Cole's like, what are you doing? Do something. This is killing me right now. So eventually, Joe just walks out casually, calmly, so and then calmly. he sort of brings in security. They come running in, but by that time, Kyler Riley is let go. So I love how much stuff they're setting up with Samoa Joe. It's great. I I really hope that he does get cleared at some point. Soon. Me too. Totally, totally. Uh, we get a quick TN Shaw video package. Boa tells Jake Atlas he made a mistake. There's no way out. Uh, uh, Zia Lee tells Mercedes that there's no road to return for her. It's mm. time to destroy. Oh, apparently. Uh, after that, we got Hit Row backstage hyping up Swerve. He says, tonight we're going to find out that Swerve is just different. Uh, and then we've got Jake Atlas and Mercedes Martinez versus Tian Shaw. Uh, it's cool to see Boa get some in-ring action. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, yeah, then we get to the scary part where Zia Lee legitimately knocks out Mercedes Martinez with her sp- spinning heel kick. Matches stopped. At that moment. Yeah, because Zia Lee goes for the cover. But yeah. like I said, Mercedes Martinez's upper body, her shoulders are rigid. Mm-hmm. And so she was trying to pin her and her shoulders weren't down. And as soon as, as Mercedes hit the mat, the ref was right on it. She knew. She knew. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when someone falls like that, you know that's not a sell. Yeah. Um, Oof. Oof. And she landed right in her face. And so she would like maybe started counting. And then she's like, all right, no, 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 no. Done. Um, and so... Uh, uh, they called the match. Didn't show Mercedes again after that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and just cut to, uh, I think they went to commercial. Because the next thing I got here is that Ciampa and Thatcher and MSK have their face-to-face at the ring. And everybody brings chairs mm-hmm. to this to this get-together. They all take seats. Ciampa mm-hmm. starts saying there's a difference between us and MSK. We make this look good. Uh, he says, it's all good. You're sitting there with your titles. But next week, the champs are the underdogs. He says, Thatcher's never held gold in NXT. Now, let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. So weren't Riddle and Pete Dunn tag champs when when pandemic hit and and Dunn was stuck overseas and Thatcher t- took his place? Weren't they still tag champs? So he did assume the title, but he's held gold but never won it. He's never won it. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me check to see. Okay, yeah. While well, you do that, I'll, I'll, he says. Anyways, Thatcher's hungry. Uh, he knows Thatcher is not a man of many words, but look at him. The man is motivated, and Thatcher's like baring his teeth, basically growling at MSK. The world knows that nobody, and he says also, the world knows nobody elevates a title like Tommaso Ciampa does. So Wesley tells them to listen, and everybody stands up. says they respect them, and they hear everyone talk, and they get it. Uh, Carter says it's time for everyone to put some respect on their names. They may be the underdog, but they're there to remind them that they are the challengers, and next week the challengers will find out why MSK are tag champs. I believe Lee said that last part. And then Nash Carter smacks Ciampa. He basically no sells it. He no it. sells it, yeah. Thatcher goes crazy, starts mm-hmm. going after MSK. Ciampa holds him back. He gets right 
basically talks in Carter's ear, mm -hmm. tells them to bring their pride, bring their titles, because they're taking both of them next week. They got a free one tonight. Next week, they won't be so lucky. So, yeah, uh, the broser waits uh, when all that stuff went down. Uh, Thatcher substituted for Dunn in a, in a title defense loss. So right. he, I think it was the sort of situation where I don't think that he's actually recognized as a tag team champion. Okay. Um, yeah. And then didn't like Thatcher like immediately turn on Matt Riddle? Yeah, it was pretty quick after that. that yeah. Uh, we got a quick Regal interview. He confirms that the uh, match between Grimes and Knight is happening at Great American Bash. Uh, talks about how excited he is for the breakup tournament. Winner faces a champ of their choosing. And then Saray walks in, says she wants a match against Tony Storm. Regal mm -hmm. says, I'll consider it. Yeah. I'm actually now I'm looking at a, let's see here, uh, WWE's, WWE.com's actual official title. Official uh, title thing. Mm, speed era, mustache mountain. What? That, what? Hmm. Hold on a second. Yeah, I don't even see the browser rights on here. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe they have kind of scrubbed that from history, huh? Uh, so we go to Cross and Scarlet. They're about to leave the CWC, get in their car, but the Theory attacks Cross. He fends him off. Uh, Gargano attacks him from be from behind, slams Cross in the car door, and he's talking to camera. He's like, anytime, anywhere, Cross, you're not at my level. And while he's talking to camera, Cross emerges from behind the car door, which is left open. He chokes out John. John. Forearms Theory in the back. Uh, they drive off, uh, the uh, sorry, uh, Cross and Scarlet, and then Joe comes out, picks up Gargano, and says, maybe you pushed Cross a bit too far this week. Well, I think the idea was Cross and Scarlet had planned on running Johnny over. And so, like, because they sort of recognize, yeah, WWE's, dot, uh, their website, they do recognize bros rights, just not Thatcher. Um, gotcha. Because they sort of have a moment where they, they, like, agree, I think. They sort of nod to each other, and they get in the car, and Johnny was in the path, yeah. And I think we're led to believe, oh, my God, he's going to run him over because he goes straight where he would have been. And you see Joe has come in and moved him aside. So he's gotcha. safe. Gotcha. But uh, uh, so, yeah. Yeah. And he says, man, you really. Uh, what did he say again? He said, uh, he says, yeah, I think you, I think you push him a bit too far. This <laughs> yeah, I really like that. It was a nice little moment there. Um, so uh, we had our and, main event. Yeah. Then we had our main event. Bronson Reed versus uh, uh, Swerve Scott. This was so much fun. I had to rewind it for Lacey because there was the moment. So Reed has the upper hand for much. There's a great spit, like a bit on the apron where he does the sit down uh, thing oh, that, that, was that Mabel used to do. He did that on the apron and just sat there for like four seconds till the ref went to five. Um, and then so on the, uh, the finish saw on the outside. So Reed has the upper hand through much of this. He's just striking, swerve, squishing him. He goes up for a tsunami because he has him laid out. B-Fab gets up, distracts the ref. Adonis pulls Reed down and then distracts the ref as Top Dalla starts to run, do the brawn train thing where he runs around the ring and he's probably looking to pounce Reed. Reed sidesteps and throws him over the barricade. I mean, he goes through the barricade. Why? I'm sorry, through the barricade, flying through this thing. I mean, he's a heavy yeah. dude. And then Adonis comes running over. No! It was hilarious. Well, he leans over and goes, you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? But the, the, his running over there screaming no was absolutely was hilarious. Was and uh, and so he's checking on Dalla. And then uh, Reed throws him over the barricade onto top Dalla. Reed is all jacked now. He gets back in, but he's not paying attention to what's going on because he gets hit with that great flying kick that uh, uh, Swerve does. House call. The house call, yeah. And then gets hit with a 450 for the win. Uh, but, yeah, that, that moment was was really great. It and was so, pretty great. Yeah, we've got ourselves great. a new yeah, North American champion. The slow no. The check no. on top dollar was pretty great. Yeah, it was pretty great. That was pretty awesome. So, uh, you want to answer some questions? Yeah, I've got a thread up here on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. It's the last day of the month. Therefore, it's the last day to get your hands on the going in raw friendo care package including this awesome comic book on the patreon patreon.com forward slash steven larson also in a week or two we're going to be, be uh, starting our new uh patreon exclusive show also exclusive to twitch subs and youtube channel members um uh, uh the, the numbers don't lie we're going to be doing going in raw math and making it official so that there is a record of the math on wrestlers yeah. 
using yeah. Friendo input and our own input should be a lot of fun. So yes. uh, hit us up on the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. It's great with his port going in raw as well if you're a fan of the show. Yep. Uh, Jorge D asks here on Twitch, Triple H pony up the money and buy the Entourage theme for LA Knight. His whole character is basically the main guy from the show, and every time he says, yeah, yeah. it reminds me of the theme. Oh, I can see that. I never really watched Entourage. Neither I did I. Is. Neither did I. Uh, I'm still trying to get to the thread here. Let's All see. right, I'll ask this one then. Uh, Nika, whenever a wrestler says butler, how much out of 10 that they will become the butler for that person they are feuding with? And uh, Nikal's opinion, when you're, we're such evil wrestling fans, we're going to cheer hard for LA Knight to win. Butler Grimes will be magic. It's 11. It's 11 out of 10. It, every time and then some. If there's a stipulation, chances are that stipulation is going to happen. Uh, let's see here. We've got, uh, rich, dirty, rich asking, should the women's division get uh, mid card titles? Uh, and what would the belts be called? Uh, let's just stick with NXM. Uh, you could do, I guess you could do uh women's North you American do, champion. Yeah. If it's on main roster, women's intercontinental and uh, North mm-hmm. American on the way on the women's mm-hmm. division mm-hmm. NXT. I don't know. I don't n- Given they have the tag titles now, I don't know that they need it, although it'd be cool to see it. I'd be down with it. Yeah. Uh, Patrick will leave with the difference with this title loss as they showed Reed in the ring disappointed instead of transporting out of the CWC, so maybe not a right-away call-up. Maybe they'll have a rematch on TV before that could be. the Bronson Reed teleports. That could be to really solidify. To, to solidify. So maybe they'll do a thing where they might do a steel cage at Great American Bash or TakeOver or something. Well, TakeOver still a while away. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Cameron Bartolazzo. I know war games is still about four to five months out, but who would you want to see in a men's and men's match and a women's match? So in war games before, didn't they do, uh, three groups, three groups of three, the first one. Yeah. Then subsequently it's been two groups of four. So I would say go back to three groups of three. Cause you've got hit row, you've got mm-hmm. legato, mm-hmm. and then you can put Gargano and theory together with, Kyle or Ryan, Diamond maybe? Mind. Have Diamond Mind in there. Oh, the Diamond Mind. You can put the Diamond Mind in there. Uh, organ Grinder. Darby confirmed to be cast Jackass 4. That's cool. Oh, that's neat. That's cool. Uh, Dang of Q. If Hit Row wants all the titles, B-Fab is going to need a partner. Who would you want that to be? It should just be Zoe Stark. She just moves from partner to partner. Or Saray. <laughs> Saray and Hit Row would be great. <laughs> uh, White Brownie says, if EO and Zoe lose next week, do you see Zoe turn on EO and begin a feud with her, or do you see EO getting called up to Maine? Uh, given that EO hasn't been on main event, I don't know that she's going to get called up to Maine. Hasn't been on main event yet. Yeah, true. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe after Vince is there to do a scouting thing and says, all right, these five people bring in the main event next week. Next week. And it's like an all NXT, all NXT episode of main event. That's good. I like it. Uh, let's see here. Jay Singh, if Reed's title drop was in preparation for him moving up to Maine, where should he go? Who should he fight? And how badly is Vincent company going to mess him up? Smackdown. Smackdown. And he joins, he joins the alpha Academy. They do like a do drop thing with him in the alpha Academy. Well, same exact story. The exact same story. Yeah. Uh, Mondo Volgare, do reports about main roster call up spoil certain title changes for you, or do you not really mind? I'm referring not just to Bronson Reed, but also for Karrion Cross. Does it take the suspense out of the match knowing that Cross is probably going to main roster right after SummerSlam? Yeah. I mean, I think people are pretty shocked. I mean, I, I, I it was spoiled for me last night. Yeah. Um, had it not been spoiled for me. Yeah, I would have thought to my it would have added some intrigue. I don't think I would have Definitely. thought it had would have been like I can kind of try to speculate where what I would have thought. I probably would have thought to myself, oh, there's gonna be a wonk finish, and then they might change the title at Great American Bash. Um, and so I would have been surprised, I think, last night, regardless. Like in a macro, in a larger sense. Mm-hmm. I think that yeah, dude, I think it is an issue. It's a problem. It's it'll be a problem for NXT if Triple H isn't allowed to consider certain people untouchable. 
Yeah. Because, yeah, it's going to be now it's not, oh, who are they going to build up to take the title from Cross? It's who are they going to fast track at that get to get that title off him? And why is his name Johnny Gargano? You know, mm-hmm. it does. It, it, it hurts some of the booking. It does. But at least in the case of Cross and Gargano, that's something that has been somewhat set up since before the last takeover. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and like I said, with Swerve and Reed, this actual match kind of came about quickly. But those two guys have history in NXT. Mm-hmm. You know, they've mm-hmm. had they've had a feud before. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Delaney demand. I want the way to attack Zoe next week so she can't compete with. Then EO brings out Poppy as her partner. <laughs> I don't think uh, Poppy wants to wrestle. <laughs> she has said as much. She looks like she barely wants to be on that stage. Uh, Carlos Diaz. What do Daniel Bryan, Johnny Gargano, and Kofi have that no other babyface in WWE has? Uh, he mentions cool guy Kyle, Apollo, babyface Apollo, babyface Roman, Drew, Biggie. All baby faces become stagnant at some point, but the former three had runs where people kept asking for more. I do think that Daniel Bryan, Johnny Gargano, and Kofi Kingston, I think there is something inherent, inherently relatable with all them mm-hmm. and, and, and mm-hmm. just their general personality. It's an intan- it's, it's one of the intangibles that they, don't, that they list on the side, you know? Yes. Daniel Bryan just connects. Gargano connects, and Kofi yeah. just connects. Everything, although, everything about them seems genuine, you know? Although I'll say this. I think that Big E has that as well. I just think that for certain people, like, if the creative's not there, there's nothing you could do about that, yeah. you know? Yeah. No, I agree 100%. Uh, organ Grinder says, Joey Janela said he got a text from Drake. Drake Wirtz and said, nice to talk to you. I'm down the street if you need anything. Apparently, Drake didn't understand that Joey was trolling. Not shocking. At, uh, at that meeting that Joey went to a couple weeks back or a week Not ago. Not shocking at all. No. Um, there's a part of the brain that just seems to close itself off when you start buying into certain conspiracy theories. Um, and it affects your logic and <laughs> common sense areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Moses poses this year NXT gets their own money in the bank for both men and women who are in the match and who wins who'd be, who'd what, if be make, what if what if they make the million dollar title their money in the bank that'd be great that'd be awesome like their uh, their old X division like the gift of the gods title in yeah. uh, Lucha Underground the plan B title whatever they called it it's not the plan, plan B. C it was plan, plan C. C there you go uh, I don't know who'd be in it but who would who would be the perfect Mr. Money I mean Johnny Gargano would be face or heel he'd be the perfect Mr. Money in the Bank. Yeah, because if he was a face, he could do the thing where I'm gonna sk- I'm gonna cash this in at takeover from the main event type mm-hmm. thing, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Or just do the opportunistic thing. Yeah, Gargano would be really good. Mm-hmm. Um, L.A. Knight would be really good with it. He'd be great with it. Uh, God, who wouldn't be great with it in NXT? They're all that perfect thing, you know. Even Kyle O'Reilly would be good with it. Grimes would be good with it. Cole would be good with it. Cole yeah. would be good with it. On the women's side, it should be Dakota Kai. That's what I was going to say. It'd be yeah. Dakota Kai. That'd be yep. perfect. Oh, my God, yep. that'd be perfect. That'd be pretty good. Be pretty good. RTG says, uh, "Who? Th- we'll end on this one. Who's going to beat Raquel if Vince decides that he wants both Raquel and Dakota Kai? You know who it should be? It should be Zoe Stark. Like That would be interesting. It would be it, it'd be like that underdog, like you wouldn't really see it coming, kind of thing. And the crowd, the crowd was pretty decent this week. They were into it. Yeah. The, the crowd would go nuts. I'll put this name out there. Tegan Knox. Oh, that's Knox good. Beat that's Raquel good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. What if uh, Kona Reeves came out to face Raquel Gonzalez? Anyways, that's going to do it for us. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We appreciate it. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.